Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, to give a statement of 10 minutes to you how we handle such big vessels on the River Elbe in the port of Hamburg. When I was first asked, I said, yeah, I, at least I need 20 minutes, better 30 minutes, really to explain how we do that. And they said, okay, well understood, you get 10 minutes. So uh, I try to run through the more or less of the presentation to show you how uh, which challenges and solutions regarding the navigation of mega ships on the River Elbe and the port of Hamburg we have. But uh, let me start with one thing. We heard a lot now about uh, economical aspects, technical aspects, and to some points I agree, to some points I do not agree. But uh, Salvatore, what you just told, was really, you see, I'm also a seaman with a long time, active time at sea. That was really for 100% uh, what I also could say. It's the same, let's say, I think we have the same thoughts in our head. But uh, I should tell now a little bit about the traffic regulation from the agenda. At first, maybe the one or the other is not so familiar with the Port of Hamburg. I'll tell you some words about the Port of Hamburg. Then the ship's growth development, we have heard a lot about that already. How do we face with the ship's growth development and then a small outlook. This is a map of the, uh, let's say, of the port of Hamburg on the one side and on this side, it's a long way from the North Sea to the port of Hamburg. It takes about 135 kilometers for a vessel and that means that's a challenge especially for the traffic management. And on the right side you see a, you know, a map from the port of Hamburg and to the public very often the port is known as a container port. Of course we are one of the biggest uh, container ports in Europe but on the other side we call ourselves a universal port. As you can see here we do not have only container terminals, we have bunkers, tankers, shipyards, multi-purpose and all the other vessels and they are also quite important for us. And if I see the yeah, this shows uh, a little bit, I think I do not have to explain so much. We heard a lot in the presentations before about the, the, the development of uh, mega ships for the port of Hamburg. That means that uh, the increasing rate of such vessels have been within the last years more than 60% since 2008. And whatever the ship owners do, do they are buying or building bigger ships or do they build smaller vessels as a port we have to handle such vessels so now how do we do this uh, and if i see the uh, and how do we face the ship's growth development there we have four points the number one is precise traffic planning and regulation Number two is further development of technical systems. Number three is simulation, training and further education from pilot and VTS staff. And number four, and that is the, uh, let's say, most expensive point, constructional adaptions. On the one side, if I start with the uh, technical things, we equipped each and every pilot on the Elbe and within the port of Hamburg with portable pilot units. I think now this is usual in used ports. The next point is that we do not, have, we of course have also our stuff in port, whisked by cars, by launchers during their control tours, and we equip them with a port monitor. That means they see on a tablet exactly the situation. How is the traffic situation in port? How is the traffic situation in, and in other things? Which vessels are coming up? And under which points we have construction works within the port? And all this information, which we have usually in the VTS center, are also given to our staff within the port. Then, of course, uh, when such huge vessels are coming up, that means the training, as I mentioned before, uh, with we develop maneuver strategies, we train pilots and VTS staff. We heard about these 400-meter vessels, and meanwhile, we have already taken four 
uh, simulation studies for such 400 meter vessels in our port. And this, everybody I think here, we, I'm here at the World Port <coughs> Conference, is familiar with simulation. We have, of course, a tidal model, a fuel model, and a ship's model. And the one point is, and that's why I mentioned this here, is the lateral surface. The lateral surface from one of the vessels we had in the simulation was nearly 18,000 square meters. And if you see such tall ship over there, it's the biggest German tall ship, it's the Goy Fock. If they set all their sails, they have a lateral surface of 2,500 square meters. And that shows that, especially for a port like Hamburg, where the vessels have to come 135 kilometers inside, the wind is a very uh, strong point we have to look at. So, and now normally the run should start a little bit. Is anybody from the technical, if you go over, ah, now it starts. Uh, this is an, uh, one simulation run with a 400 meter container vessel, which we made here in the port of Hamburg. You see now the vessel is swinging. So you see that we used four tugboats. And over here, maybe as you could see that, this was during uh, wind force seven. And also you can see, we uh, you have seen before, that uh, all the berthing places were occupied. That means, of course, we could do such simulation and see, okay, the whole best is free, all the berthing places are free, but we occupy all the berthing places with the maximum ships uh, which can be handled over there. And we do not do this only with container ships. We have done such simulations, Salvatore, you know this, with the huge uh, passenger liners. The so one thing uh, is a simulation. The next thing is a comparison between Really, the real in, uh, incoming and outgoing vessels and the simulation. And that, what I mentioned also before, the most expensive point, constructional inductions. Here are two examples from uh, extensions here within the port of Hamburg. This is the entrance to the huge, uh, to, our, to, our, uh, to our biggest, two biggest container terminals. And the other one is more in the easterly part of the port. And the next point I also mentioned before is information exchange. Nowadays, we have the situation that partly the, let's say, the terminals, they know exactly at what time the vessel will be completed. And this is not at least the time the VTS has. So partly we are coming to the situation that the VTS for the traffic management, they think that the vessel will be completed at 1600. But one or two hours before that, the terminal raised the finger and said, hey, by the way, we will be ready a little bit later due to technical problems, more cargo, whatever it is. We need, and all the participants need the information. It's the same, for example, with the tech boats. Do we really have a sufficient number of tugboats in port? You cannot only count one by one how many tugboats have been port. Are the tugboats manned? Do they have technical problems? From that side, we must have exactly the information. Are tugboats available, yes or not? And it's the same for the boatmen, for the pilots, and of course also from the uh, VTS, and all these informations we combined in one IT system called Prise. And besides that, there are two private companies owned by the terminal operators, uh, the FLZ and the NTK, and they do the coordination between the terminals. They coordinate, they know exactly, hey, Terminal A, is your vessel ready, or how long time do you need? And they pass this information also in such a system. Yeah, and then uh, within the exp uh, exhibition, uh, you will find also at the place from the Hamburg Port Authority, our latest uh, technical tools is an interactive table. I do not want to tell so much about that. You should take a look within the exposition, uh, exhibition on that. 
So how now do we, how do we want to improve our service? So one point is the planned fairway adaption. Uh, Senator Horch mentioned that already in the morning. We want to increase the depth of the Elbe for another meter. We hope that we get the final decision for that in the end of this year so that we can start. And it will take about two years to do so. And the other thing is, of course, further development of technical uh, yeah, for development of technical uh, sequence control or the development uh, of also technical systems and all the other points. I think more or less it's in every port the same and which uh, we are working on. And so we want to make sure that even the biggest vessels, container vessels which are coming up, that we can handle them within the port of Hamburg. And let me say, I see, Max, that you are coming already, that my time is running out. When I started my seafaring career, I served the first vessel I served on had a length of 140 meter. And at that time, that was in 1975, I thought this is a real huge ocean liner. And nowadays, a vessel with 400 meter, 140 meters, more or less can serve as a lifeboat for a such a big container vessel. So thank you very much.